The 80s brought us some trends that we'd rather forget about. The mullet, parachute pants, and the K-car are a couple that come to mind. But one of my favorite things from the 80s was the five-speed manual transmission. Borg Warner's T5 five-speed started the one more than four trend and paved the way for the T56, TKO, and the latest TKX transmissions. I'll give you a complete rundown and we'll check out each of these transmissions. Introduced in the early 80s, the T5 was a compact and versatile transmission that could be found in a variety of vehicles. But it's probably most popular for its use in the 5.0 Mustangs. It was a fairly durable transmission and was capable of handling up to about 300 pound-feet of torque. At just over 75 pounds dry, the T5 was pound for pound the smoothest shifting and most reliable transmission you could get back in the day. This made it a popular swap option for streetcars and hot riders alike. The updated T5Z version that we offer has been beefed up with a 330 pound-feet of torque rating and has a 295 first gear and a .63 overdrive gear. Now let's jump forward a few years to 1992, where five gears just wasn't going to be enough for the Dodge crew and their new Viper project, hence the T56 Magnum transmission. They were originally built by Borg Warner before production was turned over to Tremec, where over 30 versions of the T56 have landed in vehicles from the big three. The most obvious benefit was the extra gear. The T56 could be more closely geared than the five-speed could. The closer gear ratios meant that there'd be less RPM drop between shifts and helped to keep finely tuned engines performing in their power band. While most transmissions only had one overdrive ratio, the T56 had two, making them incredibly fun to bang gears while still providing decent fuel economy, if you could keep your foot out of the gas. Installations got a little bit more in depth as the bolt pattern for the cases changed. This required the use of a different bell housing. And since the transmission grew by nearly three inches, the cross-member mounting location changed as well. Shifter locations were added to the transmission, allowing you to mount the shifter closer to the engine using the forward location, or further away by using the rearmost location. You also have the option to flip the rear shifter 180 degrees for a position that's somewhere in between the two. Another big benefit of the T56 was the increase in torque handling capacity. Since it was designed for Viper level performance, and capable of handling nearly 450 pound-feet of torque, it was the perfect candidate to put behind power-hungry engines like Dodge's V10, Ford's Cobra R, and other high-horsepower muscle cars of the time. The Viper ACR program pushed the envelope even further, and Tremec's development program, dubbed the 6060 program, led the way for the T56 Magnum 6-speed. The new Magnum transmissions were strengthened even further with a new one-piece design main shaft instead of the two-piece found in the earlier T56. While 30% wider gears and double cone synchronizers allowed for smoother shifts well into the higher RPM range. This was a big upgrade over the original Borg Warner design and became widely used in 2004 newer Vipers, CTSVs, GTOs, Camaros, Challengers, and more. The five-speed wasn't done yet. And as the horsepower of vehicles continued to increase, something needed to change, and thus evolved the 5-speed TKO transmission. They're available in two variations for Ford and GM applications. The first, the TKO 500 has a torque capacity of 500 pound-feet, and the TKO 600 can handle up to 600 pound-feet. Three possible shifter mounting locations give you plenty of versatility. The bell housing bolt pattern changed once again, and is now identical to the earlier T5 and Muncie dimensions. Speedometer pickups for either electrical or mechanical are now standard, as well as a neutral safety and backup lighting switch. And three cross-member mounting configurations were incorporated into the TKO's tail shaft housing to accommodate a variety of vehicles. Brass synchronizers were standard issue in the TKO and can prove a little challenging when shifting above 6,000 RPMs. Another thing to consider before swapping to a TKO is the overall size of the transmission itself. Notice how tall the case is above the input shaft centerline, as well as how wide the case itself is. This can create extra fab work, especially when you're swapping it into an older vehicle with a narrow tunnel. With a wide array of gear ratio options, input and output shaft spline counts, and a shifter rail design that provided up to eight shifter mounting positions, you're sure to find a TKO for your ride. 
Tremec looked to improve upon their previous generations of transmissions with the introduction of the TKX 5-speed. They designed the TKX to fit within the short and narrow tunnel of the 68-72 Chevelle. And Mustang enthusiasts will appreciate the fact that it fits within second and third gen Mustang floor pans too. The TKX is offered in both the Ford and GM input shaft lengths and comes in seven choices of close and wide gear ratios, just like its predecessor. As you can see, the TKX's case width has been narrowed considerably. And you'll also notice that it has a much lower case height when measured from the input shaft centerline to the top of the case. The TKX is an end load transmission, which is much stronger and assembled from the rear of the transmission case, while the TKO is a top load design. The overall case length between the TKX and TKO remains identical. The T56, however, can be as much as four inches longer, depending on which configuration you choose. One of the biggest things that Tremec did to help beef up the TKX was add a mid plate between the main case and the tail shaft housing. This mid plate strengthened the transmission case, helping to prevent any deflection under heavy torque loads. Excessive deflection can cause third gear to separate from the cluster gear on the main shaft. This was an issue that was common in the T5. The addition of larger gears also helps to increase the load handling capacity of the TKX. While you can't necessarily see all the internal upgrades, you can definitely feel them when you're banging gears. To help speed up gear mesh between your shifts, the synchros in the TKX have been upgraded to a carbon fiber lined multi-cone design. New synchros, along with the added rigidity of the mid plate, will help take your shifts well into the upper 7,000 range. Another point worth mentioning is that the large 31 spline output shaft has been carried over from the TKO. And here's a little tip if you're in need of a new slip yoke. Look to the Ford C6, they share the same spline count. Shifter mounting locations have changed slightly on the TKX. The middle location is almost identical to the TKO. The rear mounting location moves the shifter just over an inch farther away from the engine than the TKO did. But since the TKX has two shifter sockets, you can rotate the rear shifter mount 180 degrees for even more flexibility. Like the TKO, the TKX incorporates both a mechanical and electric output that should accommodate most any speedo setup out there. And keeping with the street friendly vibe, a neutral safety switch and reverse light are standard issue. You'll also appreciate all the extra efforts that Tremec went to to help quiet the overall operation of their TKX. Build as a hot rodder solution, it looks to me like Tremec's TKX is going to be the new favorite for gearheads everywhere. If you're looking to get hooked up with a new TKX transmission, or you need a complete manual transmission upgrade, Holly makes it easier than ever. Holly offers a variety of Tremec manual transmissions, cast and steel bell housings, clutch kits, release bearings, transmission mounts, and a whole lot more. To see all this and more, visit us at holly.com.